Hey, welcome back everybody to the DSC build. It's been a week or two. I've been pretty sick, so I had to bail because I had to do this voiceover. So let's jump back into it and get back into the rhythm. So I got a little bit of chit chat here, so I got some time to talk while you watch this time lapse. So right now I'm installing the little uh, brass connectors that connect the bottom to the top. Now here, we have a whole bunch of little thermocouple wires. If you ever seen uh, surgery on electrical systems, this would be the one to watch. If you've never seen it, this is your first. This is my first. Um, so I'm putting these little heat shrink tubes on here because I have to pull all of these wires through the aluminum block that have individual holes for all these wires. It's a bit crazy, but this was the only way I could think of to really get them in there and not bend them off and break them. If any of these break, I basically don't have any way to fix them. They go down inside of the unit, the measuring uh, apparatus. So here you can see I'm very carefully putting each one in there. And this actually worked very, very well. I was quite, uh, quite happy with that. So... This is where those connectors, these are actually regular um, pipe connectors for just general use. So I just tightened them down and got everything set up. So now I'm putting the original circuit board back on here. And I'm going to start soldering these wires up the way they were originally. So the way they were originally, they were just twisted together and then soldered. Now I guess by twisting them together you can sort of get rid of the cold junction. Most of you have no idea what a cold junction is. Is when you put two different types of wires together for thermocouples, or you have a junction that goes through a different material. So these are made out of a special material. And if you switch that up, they will have what they call a cold junction. And you have to compensate for that. So all the wires are thermocouple wires that go all the way back to the unit. But then on the unit itself, on the circuit board, they actually are just copper traces. So I'm not sure the machine itself must be doing the compensation. Um, that's something that I don't have access to or know. So I'm assuming it is. But yeah, this was really, really tricky getting all these wires on here, as you can see. If I bend any of them the wrong way, they break off. And if they break off, well, the whole thing is basically shot because you have to replace the whole sensor. And this machine is actually about 25 years old, so it's a bit tricky to get a hold of anything for it. So I guess the solder just holds everything in place. Um, and then that takes care of most of the cold junction by wrapping the wire around there. This is not silver solder or anything special. This is low temperature standard solder. Um, if they used a custom special solder, then I don't know about it, but it seems to be the calibrations all check out. So yeah, one little piece at a time, my friends. That is electrical surgery. All right, so here we are. We are testing this thing. So I put it, put the base back on it, wired it all up, and what I want to do is just make sure it's at least operating correctly with this new plug, because it originally didn't have a plug on it, so there could potentially be all sorts of problems cold junctions and all sorts of things to be worried about. So I've got a piece of indium in there as you can see right here. So this piece of indium melts at 155.6. So on our graph here we will check it and make sure it's accurately changing in the right spot. And then we'll run some calibrations and things but had to get it all connected and tested before we put it in the pressure cell just to make sure at least the connections and stuff outside of the pressure cell don't change anything. So it's sort of a factory standard with a rewire and uh, we need to check and make sure that's right. Managed to make a pretty good mess though. My entire bench over here is pretty messy too. But you know what? It's part of getting stuff done. Alright, so here we go. It should be peeking out. It is right close to our transition temperature, the top one there, the sample temp, and it should change here. Do, 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 do. There it goes, right on the money. 
So it's still working really well, or it supposedly is working really well. I got a lot more checks to make, but at least we know that the transition temperature is reading correctly. And it's kind of funny, I took the lid off, it usually has this, uh, this uh, lid that sits on top of here. I took it off trying to see the sample, and you know, the sample isn't actually melting. But it can measure that it had a, a phase change. It picked that up. It's pretty wild. Alright, so I filled a, a trash can up with water. And I dunked the cell in there, filled it up with pressure. Just doing a simple pressure test. This was after I did some regular pressure testing. And was having a leak and I couldn't find it. So, yeah. I put the whole apparatus in there, including the uh, valves and everything. And as you can see, there it is bubbling. It was actually a, a connection unrelated to the cell itself. So it's not a bad problem to have, but it was a problem I needed to fix. All right, well, I'm glad I did this. It appears that I had a leak right here on my hose going to my pressure sensor. The cell seems to be holding just fine. I don't see a single bubble coming out of this thing. So I'm gonna let it sit for a couple hours. Then we'll hook it back up to the other system and keep testing it. I should have put it in the lab where I could have actually uh, plugged it in while it's underwater and I could have let it sit, but uh, yeah. It's too heavy to move now. It's got over five gallons of water in it at least, probably more. And the cell by itself is already pretty darn heavy. So yeah, it was leaking here, but not the cell. Well, here we are again. So. After testing pressure and vacuum, everything seems just peachy. So now it's time to install the actual head inside of the pressure cell. So this is just temporarily together and we will be installing that in here. So let's do it. So the final installment. I basically just put this whole thing together. So there's some jam nuts on the bottom and those jam nuts hold everything in place. Um, so that just keeps the rods in place because I want to be able to take off the top and bottom very easily. So I just wired this sucker up, put the plug in there, wired it up, make sure all the wires were insulated from each other. I actually ended up putting some Kapton tape in there uh, and just making sure everything was happy with that plug. This is a bit of a challenge actually. The wires weren't quite long enough, but I did manage to get them all in there. So there you can see where I put the two seals, one on the bottom and then one on the top. And that just smashes the uh, plug connector flush as can be and seals it up nicely. And that actually worked really well. So like I said, the rods go through the bottom here. And then there's jam nuts. So remember, I threaded the bottom plate. And then the jam nuts are, you know, is what's holding the threads against the plate. And then the top slides in and off and I want that uh, to be loose like that so I can just actually use my hands only so everything on the top is hand tightened and that's enough to keep it and seal so there's the jam that's on the bottom yeah this unit really really turned out nicely all right well it's been several weeks I hope you guys enjoyed me building this chamber and the time it took to edit the fun footage I got for you I thought some of those videos turned out really unique and something different that I usually don't do. So anyway, my name's Russ, rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. Let me show you what I'm doing now. Ah, well, now is actually next time. That was actually the introduction to the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Please do share these videos. This uh, is no novel task and uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys another day. Thanks for watching.